What's up everyone, it's Roger and James here, founder of This Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be looking forward to 2018. We're going to have a quick discussion about what movies are going to be coming up this year, what weeks they're about, etc. So, tons of movies, straight off the bat of Disney having one of the best years, they, you know, with like $6 billion made in 2017. It looks like 2018 is going to be following suit with some major releases. So, um, James, I'm going to let you just run through, you've got a list there of the big movies... So we're just going to run off the, the main ones that we know of as of right now. And this is going to take a couple seconds, so just bear yes. with me here. In February, Black Panther, March, A Wrinkle in Time, April, Dolphins, May, the big one, Avengers Infinity War, as well as Star Wars Solo, mm-hmm. June, Incredibles 2, July, Ant-Man and the Wasp, August, Christopher Robin, based on uh, Winnie and Pooh stories, November 2nd, uh, the Nutcracker and the Four Realms. Also, in November, Ralph breaks the internet. Wreck It Ralph two, and ending the year on Christmas, Mary Poppins returns. Yeah, and also just to throw them in here as well, from the Marvel side of things as well, we've also got the New Mutants. I think that's coming in May. June has got Deadpool two. We've also got um, X Men Dark Phoenix coming in. I think it's October time as well. Um, I think that was it from the Marvel side from Fox. I think, that was I think f- so, and then. Sony should have the animated Spider-Man featuring Miles Morales yeah, uh, and, in the costume. And also in October, I think we got Venom as well. With Tom Hardy. Uh, well, they haven't even started filming that yeah, one as far filming, as I know. Yeah, they're so. filming it now. Tom Hardy keeps putting oh, okay. tweets of have him on set and stuff. So, yes, a lot. There's quite a lot out. Um, Marvel, i be honest, I think it's too much. Um, I can't wait for Marvel to get fully hold of Fox to kind of strangle that down a little bit because... I that's just too, Fox. Fox didn't they did one in two thousand and seventeen three plus Sony chucking in two more too many too many. It's um I've talked about this many times. Superhero fatigue is one thing, and I feel like there's a little bit too much there. But nevertheless, each um, the only one really is Venom. I'm like I love Venom. Please don't cock it up. And New Mutants is a movie that I am not interested in the slightest. I do not like horror. Um, I don't know who these characters are, so uh, yeah, it's it's not really for me. I do know who these characters are, and I have no idea what they're doing in a horror movie at all. They are traditional superheroes, unless it turns out it is uh, a take on the Demon Bear saga, which was a horror in the New Mutants 20-ish era. Yeah. Um, I can understand that, because that was a horror story. But otherwise, they're fairly traditional mm. superheroes. Uh, points to Fox for trying something different, but yeah, that's not the New Mutants. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see what they do. We'll yeah. see how that movie goes. Uh, I'd stay on the Fox things. Deadpool two, I I will go see that one. Love the first one. Thought it was funny. I that that will be one of my my. I'll be going on my own. My wife didn't like Deadpool when I made her watch the Blu Ray. But that will be. But it's a but it's a romance movie. Yeah, so that will be like <laughs> that will be that kind of thing. Like I'm going on opening night. Um, I'm just a. Uh, the animated Spider-Man movie is a movie I'm interested in because I like Spider-Man. I know my I will I will be going and seeing that on my own because my wife doesn't really like Spider-Man, and it's an animated movie, so there's even less. It's just right. For, I will go see it because I'm interested in seeing what they do with it, the multiverse, and the animation looks cool. It looks different. I'm glad they're trying something different with this one. So I'm going to put this one in the kind of. I'm going it open-minded, you know. If it's if they can just recreate the 1990s Spider-Man animated TV series and put that on there, fine with me. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to give that one a pass. On tr- imp- you can impress me with this one. It's, I'm leaving it wide open on this one to, to let them do it. Yeah. So Deadpool two, agree completely. Uh, obviously, I don't have a wife to worry about, yeah. so I'm going to go see that one. <laughs> uh, it's. I mean, you look at the the number of superhero movies coming out, like you're talking about with the superhero fatigue, but so many of them are so hyped up right now. Mm-hmm. They look fantastic between Black Panther, Infinity War, Deadpool 2, ones that we haven't even seen yet. Deadpool 2, though, is just like, yeah. ah, I'm so yeah. looking forward to this. Spider-Man, uh, I'm definitely going to go see it. And I'm actually pretty interested because I do like Miles Morales, but... At the same time, I'm really kind of worried about what this is going to do to consumer perception yeah. of Spider-Man because this is the fourth version of, of Spider-Man that we've had in the past decade. And help. I still get people asking me questions like, why is Batman not in the Avengers? So yeah. 
Um, it's one thing for people who've read the comics. It's another for people to go, wait, I thought Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if the consumers can figure out this mix, but I'm mm. my optimism's not that. Now, I think the movie itself will be good. Mm. I think that that's fine, but it's going to be very interesting to see what it does to the franchise. We've also got Dark Phoenix as well um, coming into it, which I have a feeling um, almost might be the reset kind of finale of this of them as the franchise. I I mean, I know they're, they're still going ahead with making Gambit. Um, they're apparently still pushing ahead with that plans, but I can't help but feel like anything after Dark Phoenix would be 2020, and they, that'll be fully under Disney, so whether or not... Apparently Fox is still carrying on as normal, but I can't help but wonder if Dark Phoenix might be the blowout of this franchise. And I kind of hope that it is, honestly. I hope that Dark Phoenix... Kind of just draws a line. Tries a, I mean, give some of them a happy ending, but yeah. not not Phoenix. She's got to get stabbed. Um, draws a line under the X-Men, and then if when the X-Men join the Avengers Marvel Cinematic Universe, just a completely new team. You can have the classics, Wolverine, Cyclops, yeah. Storm, etc., but new actors start from the beginning. They've got no connection to these movies whatsoever. Just... Let it be a new thing, and let Dark Phoenix be the end of this era. Because yeah. X Men was the start of the modern era of comic yeah. book movies. That first one with Patrick Stewart mm. and Hugh Jackman and all that stuff. It would be nice to just be okay. That era is done. We've got yeah. Avengers: Infinity War kicking off the new era, and Dark Phoenix is the the, the end yeah. cap there. I think as well as I think like 20 odd years of the X-Men franchise it needs it needs to be rebooted to be simpler but also maybe give it three four years off let it simmer Deadpool can carry on doing his thing they can bring Deadpool in and leave him off in his own universe he can make a couple of snide comments and that's the end of it it, it can work I think it's the only one that can work carry on but so let's push um the Fox side up from that side we I mean we've got other movies that technically aren't going to be Disney like the Predator, but we're not going to worry about that later. Well, let's, let's yeah. worry about that yeah. after the deal um, is done. So we have got also uh, so obviously Black Panther. Black Panther looks looks great so far. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because, again, new character, new new things. I, I'm not a huge... I don't know a lot about Black Panther. It was a character I never really read about as, as a comic book. My friend didn't buy it, so he was one of those kind of characters I don't really know a lot about. And so I'm excited to see him and know more about that whole is the what's going on in that in that world of uh, Wakanda and all this kind of thing. So that one's that one looks great. That one's only literally coming next month. Yep. Uh, well, in February, and I yeah. think you go you'll be getting it a little bit before us because uh, yeah. yeah. the, the the Marvel movies actually come over early. You get you don't get Coco until 2018, but no, you get yeah, Black Panther. Yeah, I get Coco but, next week, but um, Black Panther get early. Uh, obviously, Infinity War just looks epic. Um, it, that's that's going to be. I think, I think that will be a big, a big movie. It will be a huge movie. It's got like forty something heroes in it. Um, I think that it it almost certainly can't live up to expectations. No. It, it's almost impossible for it to live up. To, but as long as it is a good movie, as long as it's entertaining, as long as it builds a hook in, so that we want to see Infinity War Part Two in twenty nineteen, mm. I'll consider it a success. Uh, Hopefully every character or the majority of characters get at least one moment of, oh my goodness, that was yeah. so cool. Uh, taking a step back to Black Panther real fast. I do know the character. Um, I've been reading the character for a number of years. I am super excited for this because they're drawing heavily from my favorite run on Black Panther, uh, which is by Christopher Priest. And a lot of the characters in this, uh, Everett K. Ross, which is uh, Martin Freeman's characters, the the um, bodyguard, the women, they're named mm. after the same characters from that run. So this looks, I'm just like, yeah, I've been waiting for this movie for a long time. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, psyched. It's kind of that weird thing. I'm coming in completely fresh. So, but I'm really kind of interested in seeing where that one goes. We also got Ant Man and the Wasp, which um, it's funny because for me, like Ant Man is that was such a refreshing movie because it was a, a comedy kind of heist movie. Mm. So I am actually going into this one. It's not like one I'm super excited for because I think um, Infinity War and Black Panther are a lot more exciting. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, more Ant Man is good. Um, I think it'd be quite good. I think really having sort of Deadpool and and Ant Man kind of following up 
after the big like Infinity War situation. So that'll be good. Yeah, and it'll hopefully be just a more light-hearted movie like the first one was. That'll kind of it'll be a palate cleanser after yeah. the epic, the hopefully the epicness of Infinity War. Mm-hmm. So definitely looking forward to that. I'm definitely also looking forward to seeing uh, Evangeline Lily in the Wasp outfit and kicking some butt and taking mm-hmm. some names. Uh, I hope that they don't go, they don't go too far into traditional superheroics. I hope that it's either another heist movie or something, you know, different from what everything else yeah. is coming out this year. So, so then I'm going to flip over to Star Wars. So we've got Han Solo's um, solo movie coming in May. Um, I'm a trailer supposed to be coming. I mean, it, it could come between now and recording coming. It's supposed to be. I mean, they were four or five months away, and we've not seen one clip of this movie yet. I mean, it's been surrounded in controversy because of the losing the directors and reports coming around of over Christmas of, like, Disney are expecting it to bomb. They are not... um, This one's an odd one. This one's really going to be... This is a real gamble for uh, Disney because this is taking... This is doing the prequels version two. And, yeah, I'm... It's hard to say I'm excited because I've seen a dodgy photograph from Russia. That's basically all we've seen so far. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, Ron Howard, once he took over, he did start tweeting behind the scenes stuff. And he, yeah. he, those were kind of cool. But, yeah, we haven't seen a proper set of images for it. Uh, you know, this report that you talked about over Christmas where, like, oh, they're expecting it to bomb. I don't put any credibility into that report at all. That's literally just someone going, yeah, that movie is going to be terrible because I say so. Um, they might not be wrong. I mean, let, let's be fair. It, there are warning signs that they are, in fact, correct, but I'm not putting any credibility it into just, that report. It just feels like, you know, like, I mean, I'm just trying to think. We had Celebration with a trailer. So usually six to eight months out, we start seeing stuff. I think right. it's the fact that we're now form, you know, literally... 20 weeks away from the movie coming out and we've seen nothing about it. It's never usually a good sign, but no. maybe they were just holding off till after last, they wanted last Jedi to get all the push. But I don't think um, on the day of last Jedi hitting cinemas, announcing you're doing a $50 billion takeover is going to really help with the press at that point. Um, True. It seemed to do all right. The movie was it was like, did all right at the cinema. Um, just, 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 just slightly. Okay. So flicking over now to the Disney side of things. So first off, um, this has got Coco next week for the Brits. So I'm looking forward to starting the year off with that one. Um, then we're going to have A Wrinkle in Time with Oprah and Free. Now this is a movie that actually... I'm interested in this one because it's fresh, brand new. I know nothing about it. And my wife has read the book years ago or something. So my wife knew about this. When I said about Wrinkle of Time, she was, or she mentioned something and I'm like, I don't know what you do. And she goes, oh yeah, it's fun. Have you not read it? And she, so this will be a movie that we'll probably go, we'll probably go see because I think she'll really enjoy this one. And I'm glad that Disney are doing something like this. And even the Nutcracker, actually it was funny because when we were in London and we wanted to go see the Nutcracker a couple of years, about last, or last Christmas and it was fully booked up. Um, so that'll be a movie that we will go see as well. That's good. And I'm glad that Disney kind of like Beauty and the Beast um, was a big movie. And I think they need to go after that audience. You know, I mean, obviously, like I say, a, a primarily female audience and a family audience. I think Disney need to. I'm glad that they've got a couple of movies on their slate that aren't just you know Disney and <laughs> Marvel. Yeah, Marvel, yeah, it's so. not just not the the straight up testosterone fests of the Marvel. Yeah. And, and I mean. Women make up 50% of the planet, so yeah. it certainly makes sense to uh, yeah. target movies at them. Now, I will say, I read A Wrinkle in Time way back in the day. We're talking like 20 years ago. I remember yeah. virtually nothing about this book. Um, I do remember it fondly, but I don't have any specific memories. I, yeah. I barely know what happens. And I know it involves folding space-time and tesseracts and stuff like that, and I had no idea what a tesseract was when I was a kid. But yes, is it bad the fact I only really know that from the Marvel movies? <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest. I think there's probably a certain amount of them going. Oh yeah, people know what a tesseract yeah, is I'll now. For, I'll be waiting for Loki to turn up. Um, yeah, pretty much. But um, I'm gonna wait for reviews. I'm gonna. I, I have to admit my confidence isn't super high in this, mostly because from what I remember of the book, is it is crazy weird. Hmm. Like the stuff on. There's stuff written in there like, I don't know how you are going to possibly turn this into a movie. If the reviews are good, I will absolutely go see it. If the reviews are 
less than favorable. And let's let's say yeah. like forty percent or less on Rotten Tomatoes. I'll just wait for Blu-ray. But yeah, wait, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll I mean, see. we've I think we've got like a two-week delay on it for us, so that kind of does it can have an issue, of, um, especially if, you know if it gets a bit lukewarm somewhere. It can uh, it can do the opposite. So that was definitely going to be two moves. That one and the Nutcracker. I mean, I know very little about. The, I know the main song, and there's do 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 do. Dude, yeah, don't get it. Yeah, YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, we just yeah. got blocked. Yeah, it's so. It'll be, uh, and then something new. At least, at least with those two movies, I'm looking at it going. Okay, they might be old books, but for me, they are fresh takes on something fresh. They're doing something original, and I think that's a good thing. I do feel like it's. We need something fresh and original from Disney every now and again, and those are going to be it. Um, flipping over and, now to animation, we got Incredibles two. Yep. Uh, obviously, it's that's going to be one of the biggest Pixar movies. Yeah, you've got the, the proper Fantastic Four movie that way. Um, so this will be. It's again, it's like superheroes, but I don't really count it as a superhero movie. It's like, um, and I, I'm looking forward to that. I think that one's going to do great. It, it's interesting because when the first Incredibles came out, superheroes movies weren't the way they are now. No. We didn't have the superhero fatigue. It was, it was a nice, fresh voice. Uh, so now we're going to have to see what Incredibles 2 can do in the middle of the superhero yeah. renaissance. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, we've got Wreck-It Ralph 2, which um, I love the first one, one of my favorite Disney movies for, like, for years. I'm still a little bit worried with this one because for me, Wreck-It Ralph is all about video games and video game references and being about video games. I'm not entirely sure about it going into memes and Google and Amazon that's where I'm a little bit worried. I'm I'm kind of like, it'll be all right. It'll, it'll be all right. But I'm a little bit like, you're taking what I loved about Wreck-It Ralph about, and taking video games that are mainstream and instantly they've just kind of gone, oh yeah, well, the internet's bigger than get video games. And no, I wanted, I wanted a Mario cameo. I wanted, you know, I wanted, you know, I wanted some, a video game movie, not yeah. an internet movie. Um, I saw a clip of it at D23. Um, I don't think they've released that no. clip publicly, but there have been descriptions of it. Yeah. So if you guys want to look it up, you can. Um, when I watched it, it was freaking hilarious. Yeah. But And I, I laughed yeah. a ton. But at the same time, after I, I got out of the, the animation panel and I was kind of thinking about it, I was like, yeah, this is really in-jokey. This is yeah. really, like... Obviously, it was at D twenty three, so you're yeah. gonna, you're you're playing it for Disney fans. But I'm like, a lot of those jokes, most people are just gonna be like, mm, yeah, I remember Snow White was a thing. Why is she doing that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I I am a little bit worried, but at the same time, you know, like the first one was very yeah. good, and we'll see. Yeah. I, but yeah, they need to lay off the memes. This they don't want this to be a Shrek movie, you know, which is all like modern references and, and doesn't age well. Yeah, well, I think that's the biggest worry is that these things can age badly of when you end up watching a movie and they'll say something or do something like, well, oh, yeah, that was... Like, they'll start doing a Harlem shake or something. You're like, oh, yeah, that was... Yeah, whatever. Um, but, yeah, so what other... If, if I'm just trying to think what other ones were on the list. Well, uh, there, there was also Christopher Robin and Mary Poppins Returns. Yes. Okay, so Christopher Robin... Is that, that's, that is an animated live action kind of rock, Winnie the Pooh thing, isn't it? I think it's it's just straight up live action. There might be like some animated bits where the they show the Hundred Acre Wards or whatever, but the main story is literally about um, Christopher Robbins and the 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 inspiration for the books. Yeah, but didn't we? Is that odd one? We've just had one that just kind of fell out uh, with. Uh, what was her name? Um, uh, Margie Ro Ro uh, the Oh, Margie yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, it's a little bit harder. Like, like, it's a Winnie the Pooh. Just do Winnie the Pooh. That's what we want. We want a live action Winnie the Pooh like Paddington. That's what we want. You know, don't, don't, you know, it feels a little bit like, I think having two Christopher Robin books within, it's like, just get on and do Winnie the Pooh properly. Give, give us, I know, the, you know, just do a, an old fashioned animated movie and just stop trying to weasel around with it's like trying to do prequels and stuff for winnie the pooh it's like, i mean it's really yeah, not needed it, <laughs> this isn't as near as i can tell this isn't really like a prequel to it this is just an origin for it. this is what they did what a couple of years ago in their uh their version 
of the making of Mary Poppins, yeah. Saving Mr. Banks, which was so revisionist history that I'm actually yeah. a little bit worried about this because I don't know the history of Christopher Robin. I don't know the history yeah. of these books. I do know the history of Mary Poppins. And like, yeah, you guys whitewashed the heck out of this story. <laughs> she hated you guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the authenticity of it. Mm. But, I mean, if, if they if they can make it entertaining, then yeah. okay. So okay, so then we're gonna finish off Christmas. De- Christmas. Um, already. <laughs> Let's talk about going Christmas back to already. Mary Poppins. Yeah, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins returns coming out Christmas. Um. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm a little bit like. Sometimes just leave it. Sometimes just put something out there and just let it go. It let it be what it is. Don't try and reboot it. Don't try and refresh it. No songs are ever going to match what we saw in the original one. You're taking, I mean, I watched, I literally, Boxing Day, Mary Poppins was on. I only watched it last week. So it's fresh in my mind. And it's like, just let, let this one be. You can't reboot everything. This, this movie is really going to have to be like epic or it's going to be a failure. I, this girl's got so much love and then because we've not had anything new mary poppins since this movie came out obviously walt disney was involved in it i mean i went to see the stage show in in broadway in, in new york when we were there and loved it but that's a stage show I, this is a sequel i really obviously there was other mary poppins books so there has been right. stuff for it but this one's gonna be a, a i think this one's gonna be either Epic or a massive failure. I can't see the see, in between. I don't think it's going to bomb. I think it's actually going to do really well at the box office uh, because there is a lot of nostalgia for it. I know, yeah. and I know I realize my sample size on this is very small, but I know people like my mom who are, who has such fond memories of growing up with Mary Poppins and then growing up with their kids yeah. uh, with, with Mary Poppins and sharing, sharing it with them that this movie will get by on nostalgia now whether or not it's any good or not is a completely different story but and the fact that it's coming out on christmas which is one of the biggest movie days of the year here in the states because this is your family's all together you want to go to the movies what's better than like the ultimate family movie mary poppins so (laughs) well (laughs) it was a retort it was Lord of the Ring, what? <laughs> yeah, no, and there was about the, when the original trilogy came out for like three years at Christmas, the movie came out, and I just remember taking my dad to seeing, and the same thing with Star Wars. Really, it's that thing of I take my dad to the cinema to see Star Wars, and then the, uh, and, yeah, and then fair. the same with the thing with the Lord of the Rings. I took him to. It's that kind of those kind of movie, yeah. So yeah, but I can see what you mean. It's but, a yeah, family movie. I, but now, whether or not it's going to be any good is a completely different matter entirely. And I have to admit, my faith in this is extremely low. But that, having said that, we haven't seen anything from this movie. There was a clip at D23. I did not see it because no. I wasn't at the live action panel. But we need a trailer. Mm-hmm. We need to hear at least some of the music. I know they've got uh, Lin-Manuel yeah. Miranda in it. Yeah. His his music style is not to my taste, but he is extremely popular. So you yeah, know. see, I was looking to, I was just about to say that. I mean, I'm going to try and say his name there, but we're between him doing obviously Hamilton. I don't know anything. I've not heard anything from Hamilton, but obviously there's a lot of uh, pre- um, hype about that. But I know him from Moana, okay? right? And I know, I know him from Moana too. Um, and I think he's working on this. It's a on the Little Mermaid live action one as well. You know, he um, is going to yeah. be. He's becoming the the go to guy for. So I'm a little bit like, okay, you've gone out and probably got one of the the best people right now for doing musicals, and you're getting him on board. So, and it, I'm I'm gonna give this one. It's like the music is gonna have to. You can't you can't be nostalgic, but also you've got to be. You can't just redo them. I mean, I do I do wonder if they should if they need to do super califragilisticexpialidocious anyway, just to kind of. It's a bit like when you, I was like, I'd be like yesterday, they the the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory remake with Charlie with um Johnny Depp, where and I went to see the stage show last year, and it was like they take away the original songs and it loses loses it. So there's that catch twenty two. If they don't put anything in that's similar, it can annoy people, and if they go all original, it can be it's very gonna be just tricky. You know what I didn't realize? I didn't realize that. Uh... 
Lin Manuel was the voice of Gizmo Duck in the new Ducktales. Yeah. I didn't know that, so no. that's cool. Yeah. It has he's, nothing he's to do with Mary Poppins. Yeah, no, but there we go. But, so there we go. Uh, so that is that's. Oh, and we have got dolphins as well coming out in right um, as a Disney Nature one. So we, I'll I'll see it in August when it's released on video on demand because as we mentioned in another episode, Disney Nature doesn't seem to translate to anywhere else in the world. They don't seem to promote these outside of it. So. Um, we'll see. We'll, after the Amazing Blue Planet two, it's good. Maybe that's why they don't show us these kind of things. But yeah. there we go. That is 2018. Loads of movies for us to be talking about, and you know, we'll, our aim will be to cover all of these and probably some Fox ones as well. Um, so there's a lot. To see, there's a lot out this year. So we'll be we'll be sure to share our thoughts on these movies. Let us know in the comments below which movie you are most excited for. And you can put maybe in the where as well what you're least excited for. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. As per usual, you can go check us out over at thiskingdom.com. Favorite us, bookmark us, add us to your RSS feeds to keep up with the latest from us. You can also find us on social medias. And if you're on YouTube, you can hit that subscribe button, give us a like. And if you're on the audio versions as well, you can also subscribe there. Where can they find you, James? Find me, heroiclegacy.com. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. Laters. <laughs>